Oke, okay. uh, thank you all for joining our breakout sessions uh, and welcome back. Uh, uh, now we we gonna hear from all moderators, uh, but what they got from each breakout sessions from four aspects: biophysical, uh, economy, social, and governance. Let's start it from Pak Daniel. Pak Daniel. Thank you, thank you, Kanya. Uh, we, we had a very exciting and interesting dynamic uh, discussion in our group, attended by more than 45 people. I think it was almost 50 and then on and off. And uh, we were discussing a lot of issues from the panelists and then confirmed or con tragic or challenged by our discussion, but uh, let me show you what, what we've been discussing very quickly because I only have five minutes here. So uh, the group identified or uh, think about uh, proposed principles that peatland must be vegetated, wet. We were arguing whether wet first or vegetated first, depending on the condition. Sometimes vegetation comes first and then it flourishes when water is come back but uh, suddenly uh, the system should emit less carbon. That's the principle we were discussing. And uh, I do not want to read this, but in general, we, we identified four criteria. At least that's what I try to capture quickly, um, group them in the very neutral kind of uh, word or term like land cover. We do not say it's uh, primary or secondary, etc., etc. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's neutral. It's not uh, leaning towards whatever objective. Hydrology is the same. And then fire susceptibility is just the characteristic also the heat properties. So uh, we managed to discuss a number of indicators from each of these criteria. And to some extent, we also discuss the verifier or units of, of this thing. And certainly we, a very uh, arrive in a very deep discussion about uh, the water table as well as water content. That's, that's very different context. And uh, all in all, we, we were thinking of very carefully consider in, at what reference we are talking about when we say 40 centimeters, 60 centimeters. So the reference is important. So that's, that's very, uh, very quantitative and as well as practical, I should say. We are also thinking about the, the adaptability of the criteria and indicators here when we are working with communities. And also in, 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 the, in the spirit of uh, adopting their ideas as well. So we, we try to uh, think about the trade-off between reliability of the criteria and indicators uh, especially indicators, but also the accuracy. So sometimes we have to have expensive equipment. No, it's not affordable. And uh, we can listen what the people say and what they observe and do it very easily in the field. And some sort of applied technology is also discussed, the possibility of quantifying soil moisture, etc., with very easy and quick uh, uh, not very accurate, but useful to quantify what you have in the field. So that's in a nutshell uh, from the biophysical group. I hope that's uh, clear enough to uh, give you a taste what we've been discussing. And carbon is, is very, very intense in terms of content, uh, flux, etc., etc. But let's let's do it later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pak Daniel, for excellent report. Now we are ready to move to another moderator. Uh, yeah, we will support uh, her session on economy. So, Dia, the floor and time is yours. Thank you, Kania. And also, I'd like to thank the panelists, Bapak Budi and Ibu Siti, and our discussion, Bapak Har Darsono Hartono at the economic session. So, Pak Budi presented an extensive review on how economic attributes embedded within the environmental services and goods provided by the pitland, hence the valuations of the pitland benefit is actually critical. He conveyed many potential 
criteria and indicators related to the cost saving and value of avoided environmental disaster and emission, value of ecosystem services, sustained and long-term growth, among others. And then Ibu City emphasized the economic security, infrastructure, well-being, industry, and dependency, and also proposed um, to the alternate indexing methods refer and adapted to the Indonesian Village Development Index, Katsino Matter, and the Circles of Coastal Sustainability Framework. And then Pak Darsono, as our discussion, provide critical response on how to see restorations in a broader perspective. We have to be very sensitive on livelihood issue while also balancing the ecological integrity. We should see the underlying point, such as education and awareness of all parties involved including the community and government. Also, it's important to reconcile restorations effort with the value addition on sustainable business development for the community. Uh, basically, all of us agree that there should have been a behavioral change to the community and also combined with incentivizing the community um, with uh, economic uh, development. Thank you. Yeah, for the quick and precise report. And uh, we'll move on to the third aspects, social aspect. It will be delivered by Rupesh Bonia. So Rupesh, the floor and time is yours. You have five minutes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kanya. Uh, my apologies, I, my video is not on because what Daniel was saying, the connection had some issues and I'm calling from the phone. So limited capacity. I won't be sharing any screen either, uh, but I hope my voice is not interrupted. So uh, I would also like to start with a big thanks to our panel members, uh, Ibu Yuti, Ibu uh, Moira, and Ibu Sera, and our distinguished discussant, uh, Yoshi Katrina. We had very interesting discussion where we all came to one, con one big conclusion that social aspects is very complex and not easy to tackle. Uh, so this, this, uh, this entangled nature, uh, when we talk about social issues in connection to peatland restoration, whether at uh, local level, whether at landscape level, bring about a lot of challenges. And it is, uh, it, it will require a lot of uh, coming together participatory approaches to address those uh, uh, complexity and uh, how we can do this using criteria and indicators approach. So we didn't have a lot more solutions or answers, but we did have a very important and thought-provoking discussions. We all agreed that at a very higher level, at a principal level, com community well-being and uh, equity would be could be widely demonstrated. Uh, in those peatland restoration intervention and activities. So some of the things that we touched upon at the level of criteria is that it's very important to look uh, at social capital, one of the things. But, and under social capital, there could be indicators of gender equality, uh, power sharing, that is empowerment, and uh, then social networking. So social networking bring about another important aspect, which was connectivity. And by analysis, the social network analysis, one can understand how information flows and how, who makes the decision, who has most say in those decision making. So that needs to be one of the criteria. How do you measure that connectivity amongst the stakeholders? Third would be sus sustainability. So Overall, if the sustainability of that, uh, which, in, which itself is a very broad topic, but if there are actions that improve sustainability as a whole, then, uh, the, then the indicators for those could be useful in identifying whether peatland restoration is uh, making success or not. Um, our discussion, uh, Yossi highlighted the importance of data availability and relevance. Many a times, these complex issues are not uh, able to be uh, resolved because lack of data access or even collected data. And so to have that relevance and data availability in our indicators will be very, very important as we go about. That's all, thank you. 
Rupesh. Now we move to the last uh, aspects, governance aspects, delivered by Pak Heri Tirnomo. Pak Heri, time the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Kania. So um, again, I would like to thank to uh, the panelists, uh, Ibu Dia, Pak Aspid Dewi, and also Pak Marsan for lively discussion in the governance aspect. So during the uh, discussion, the breakout session, first Ibu Dia mentioned for governance aspect the importance of uh, participation, profitability, and productivity of smallholders in fair commodity supply chains, and also uh, reducing uh, social conflict, protecting human rights, including labor and indigenous land rights. So there's a uh, very important to understand the participation and also reducing social conflict. And from uh, the second speaker, again, the participation is key. And he, as we propose uh, several indicators, such as the uh, effective public uh, consultation representative from the authority, also mechanism for for public participation must be available, space must be available. Also the importance of transparency in uh, providing information and progress, ensuring access for all stockholders. And then the accountability, the public accountability of government agency related to their performance. It's from uh, the second uh, speaker. And then for the third speaker, uh, Again, the principle is uh, participation, and Pak Dwi proposed three um, indicator. First is recognizing the right, custom, and culture. Also understanding the special relationship between uh, stakeholders and side, because each side will be quite different. Also engagement of all stakeholders throughout all steps. And then uh, Marcel provide uh, uh, ideas on the uh, the land tenure as key to to uh, to mention in governance aspect, and also um, link to decentralization as well as whether we are process oriented or outcome oriented indicators. Also need to understand the. Uh, that restoration means different thing for different stakeholders. Some stakeholders mention more on the biophysical aspect, and some stakeholders more concern on the livelihood from uh, restoration. Also, cost effectiveness for uh, stakeholders coming from the restoration. And from the discussion from the floor, we uh, we discuss the what kind of uh, a good approach to institutionalize the proposed indicators. So we develop indicators, but nobody uh, uh, recognize if we are not developing, this is another uh, things to do. CNI should be developed in multi-stakeholder way. It's not, not only CIA itself should be uh, participatory, but when we develop should be uh, in participatory way. Also the uh, understanding the, uh, uh, the the need the landscape uh, platform. So finally, we uh, suggested the criteria, something like uh, decision making process should be participative for all stakeholders, transparency, public accountability, and commitment, recognition of human right, land tenure, and local wisdom, gender aspect, also recognition of the local context. That's all what I can share, uh, Kamiya, to the uh, primary. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Harry. Uh, and thank you to all our moderators, uh, panelists, and discussions from the breakout sessions who all, uh, already gave us some very insightful information about developing the criteria indicators for the aspects. Now we'll move to the presentations. Uh, there will be a Dr. Harris Gunawan who will deliver the concluding remarks and the way forward. 
Dr. Harris is a deputy from the Pitland Restoration Agency or Badan Restorasi Gambut. So, Pak Harris, if you're ready now, the time and floor is yours. Yeah, hello, Kania. Thank you. Okay, Pak. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, can I share my slide before I making uh, conclude for the our uh, meeting? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, can you see the my slide? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, before I start, uh, I use uh, this very limited time for uh, say Happy New Year's, stay healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Even just uh, very earlier to say, because I think uh, for the next year we have to. Uh, follow up the our uh, very how can I say it big discussion and very serious discussion in the four uh, webinar that I follow and thank you Pa uh, Prof Daniel and Tim for also um, um, maintain and also keep the this uh, program ah uh, before I make a conclude I just also show you. Uh, when we talk about the pit land, so please come to this area. <laughs> this is uh, really, how can I say, uh, very uh, complete, I think. Uh, we, we say that uh, wet, wet pit land and then also the people are very happy, the children. Even in the, the, in the pandemic era, I think they, they don't use a mask like, like me. So very independent right now. So uh, I think uh, this is real. How can we hope for the uh, future? The generation will be happy, uh, stay on, uh, live uh, on the tropical peatland ecosystem. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think during four webinar, we have elaborated more than 30 talk about the criteria and indicator. We synthesize four aspects covering biophysics, social, economy, and governance. We have to acknowledge ourselves who have been so the ideal process to develop criteria and indicator. We acknowledge also the enablers to way forward to pit restoration and assess the criteria and indicator. As example work, monitoring criteria and indicator in terms of biophysics shall be able to be integrated part of assisting BRG work in the BRG chapter one. So we have, we have monitoring system in all of our Indonesia, which can be more developed to gather more insightful data for criteria and indicator in biophysics. Not to mention, this also provide lesson learned about social integration, so we cannot uh, spare it uh, its other. And, and how economic example, uh, we promote green economy for, for the future. Uh, can we develop on the uh, support with restoration? So uh, my college, Pak Budi, has mentioned BRG activities provide insight, insight toward criteria and indicator development. Suitable and precise data must be used to establish comprehensive criteria and indicator for peatland restoration. Yes, we have several monitoring as mentioned before. Also restoration plot and implementation which can be listen, listen learn to apply the criteria and indicator we have elaborated. We have modalities 
to, to provide more insight for how peatland has restored based on the criteria indicator, not only biophysic but also social economy and how policy would enable the uh, restoration. So the last uh, slide about the conclusion. The existing biophysic criteria that BRG has been enriched by the social, economic, and governance criteria and indicator. As uh, Pa Nazir also give us the 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 the, 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 the opening speech in the our past uh, webinar. Criteria and indicator is progressive and dynamic for measuring and monitoring restoration success. It is not it study it steady up. So I think uh, we need to continue our collaboration and uh, discussion. Particularly, the changing by behavior and practices should be evaluated to including the involvement of private sector and non-state actor. So because uh, I, I also uh, listen that uh, we uh, should be consider work at the uh, landscape uh, scale. The criteria and indicator for peatland restoration are set covering biophysics, social, economy, and ecology, which are said to be thread off and supported by policy measure. The modality way forward are available covering the transdisciplinary, multi-expert, several monitoring equipment and models, tremendous action research from BRG, and cooperation with multi parties, including government, NGO, national, and international parties, developed participatory approach at the local scale. Example action at many, many locations from research and implementation are available, which can be assessed at the plot level from 20 from 2.5 until 20 hectares or one zone, I mean that water zone, so peatland hydrocolon unit or water zone, and how the way forward for larger scale landscape or peatland hydrocolon unit shall, shall be more uh, uh, research. So I think that's all my uh, conclusion. Thank you, uh, and let's uh, continue our working to uh, make more uh, robust uh, our criteria and indicator for tropical peatland uh, restoration in the future. Thank you, Kania. Uh, thank you, Pak Haris. Now back to you, Rupesh. Yeah. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Pa Harris, and all the participants, uh, discussants, panelists, members. I really thank you for your time making this uh, whole series, the four events, a very successful engagement and learning experience. And this is just kind of charted out a uh, few thoughts or uh, uh, ideas to move forward next year. As Pa Harris was saying, in 2021, we have to do a lot more work. So let's all uh, stay good, stay happy. Wish you a very happy new year in advance. And we will all come back to you. Uh, and in 2021, we will continue with uh, more work on this topic. So thank you again. Uh, thanks a lot. For panelists, we will be joining a debriefing room and uh, the link is shared by Kanya so we can go over some of the discussions if you have time. So with that, I say goodbye to this uh, Zoom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Rupes. Thanks all. Bye, Justin. Thanks.
Ayo. Thank you, Pak Haris. Thanks, Pak Haris. Terima kasih, Pak Haris.